Thank well, you very much. We'll miss you, but at the same time, we wish you well. Well, I'm going to be up on Wall Street um, as corporate vice president for Drexel Burnham Lombard, the investment banking firm. And uh, I'll keep all those Wall Streeters in mind. We'll make sure when the good economic data comes out, they say the right things about Reaganomics. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going to help the advanced teams when they go up to New York right. a week ahead of time to set up. Can I ask you for one more favor? Can I get a hug? <laughs> Tonight at the Christmas party. Yes. Thanks. Thank you so much. Bye. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Bell. Merry. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Karen and John Roberts. How are you? Just fine. Good to see you. Merry Christmas. Good Same to you. Here, here. Mr. President. Hi. How are you? This is Benjamin. Well, Benjamin. That's for me. Yeah. Thank you. Say hi. Why don't you come in when we get it? Oh, Would you like to stand, Benjamin? That's good. Benjamin. Gotta get it done. Mr. Coon. I don't want to get a picture. I think he's a little shy. <laughs> <laughs> well, not worry about it. I got a nice picture of Tiffin on her case. Yes, he did. Oh, he picked it out. Okay. You've got to see Tiffin on her case. You've got to see Tiffin on her case. Here, we'll try one more. Benjamin. Benjamin, we'll burn Tiffin on her case. Karen, Karen, look right here, Karen. Okay, we got one. Great. Wait one second.
New York cop heard that Irish brogue. <laughs> Being one himself, he said, well now, lad, he says, let me tell you. He says, you wait, you wait until the light, he says, the light turns green, and then you go to the other side of the street. He says, when the light turns green, hmm? <laughs> when the light turns orange for just a few seconds, as it does, and then green. And he started out and he got out about six feet, turned back to the cop, but he said, they don't give them damn Protestants much time, do they? <laughs> 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 She got to be official. Hi, John. Yes, we have a And you know yes. <laughs> But uh, they've all told me that coming to Ireland will <laughs> <laughs> help tourism. But you know, I want to have you as a guest. You told me that house is great, so come yes. and enjoy it with me. Yes. I'm sure that I can have you too. I hope that the day will come. It's always gone. This is very change. Your untiring effort to save the government billions of dollars by implementing a successful Medicare hospital reimbursement system is outstanding. Americans can thank you also for your leadership in addressing the AIDS problem. You were also the driving force in mobilizing the business community to improve the lives of disabled Americans through high technology. And uh, this public-private partnership is a tremendous success. Now you're soon to be off on another difficult assignment, Ambassador to Ireland. It's a place special to both of us, and unfortunately it's a rather troubled island. And your assignment there now is important, particularly since the recent Anglo-Irish agreement on Northern Ireland. That you will be, as you've always been, an eloquent spokesman for peace and justice there. And I think probably the most appropriate way to wind up my remarks is to turn to the land of our forebears and in their tradition say may the land the may the road rise beneath your feet may the wind be always at your back and the sunshine warm upon your face and until we meet again may god hold you in the hollow of his hand Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, and friends, it's a very special moment for me to share this podium with you, Mr. President, and the greatest honor that I have yet experienced to take on a new assignment at your direction and under your appointment. It has been a privilege and an honor to serve you as Secretary of Health and Human Services. I served at a very unique time. I'm very proud of the record that we have accomplished there your record, Mr. President, because it was your leadership which actually devised our philosophy and our blueprint. And I think we showed Americans that we could be compassionate while, be cons while being conservative. And I think that was an important message to share. Now you have given me a new assignment, Mr. President. And if my mother were here, she'd say, wasn't it nice of himself to have such a lovely party for you? <laughs> this moment because you and I have perhaps discussed Ireland more than we have discussed many other subjects. Of course, I will never bring to the Irish your gift of storytelling, but I will bring to them your interest in the resurgence of Ireland, its economic development, the concern for the people of Ireland as our friends and allies and indeed our relatives, our kin. I feel very strongly that you send me to Ireland at a unique moment, a very historic time a time of hope for reconciliation in the North. And I believe very strongly, Mr. President, that the Anglo-Irish Accord would not have actually been negotiated had you not been prodding both sides and had you not had such a winning and effective, forceful relationship with Margaret Thatcher, whom I know you respect very much and I know respects you. And her agreement to the Irish Accord the Anglo-Irish Accord was pivotal to the success of its early founding and to its future, and to its future progress. I hope to play a role on the international scene in support of many of your other initiatives. I truly believe in your leadership in terms of 
our Star Wars initiative and its potential for peace. And I will carry to the Irish Forum my own concerns and our shared concerns for support, for economic development, for peace and then to violence in Northern Ireland, and for the well-being of the Irish people. But I will also bring to them your views on international issues, because we are of one world and we are one people. And I truly believe, Mr. President, that your greatest accomplishment will come in the International Forum as a peacemaker, a unique peacemaker for our time. And to be part of that pleases me beyond anything I can say. I have had a marvelous experience, almost three years at Health and Human Services. I expect the next experience to be equally enriching and even more challenging. But I only wish my mother were here today because for all the years in Congress she said, Margaret, what are you in Congress doing for Ireland? <laughs> and I'll say, Mother, I'm coming home to Ireland and I'm going to take America with me. Thank you, Mr. Very President. Good. I had thought about some of those uh, old-fashioned glasses bearing the crest, and then I thought, in Ireland, no, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have Olivia glasses. <laughs> <laughs> we all have to wait. <laughs> you can meet some of our friends, Mr. President. Yes, all right. I think these are some of the Republicans who have elected me for years and years and special friends. Well, so well please say hello to all of you and to have you here. Mr. President. I just want to be 39 and holding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it's freezing all morning, and then all of a sudden the place warmed up. Well, now I know why. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till February 6th. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy birthday, <laughs> Thank you. Very, thank you very much. This, this is a surprise for me. I thought I was having lunch with Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I think you want me to get fed. <laughs> We were going to ask you what you wish for it, but we're afraid of the answer, so we won't. <laughs> you know what I wish for. <laughs> Are they still here? <laughs> A medal of not in things politic, she'd rather do your bidding. It's not, if it's hot you want, it's hot she's got. A soothing cool for fevered brow. 
In better office, couch or chair, at night and daytime's glare, she questions not your viewpoint aired, only when and how, not where. <laughs> uh, no arcane talk of throwing, a comparability of tanks, or injured comment to invade about effects on feminine party ranks. In short, she is the perfect partner. Too bad we're not all like her. <laughs> Very good. Very good. That's cute. And you put a hot water bottle in there? That's Ellie's punch. Uh, she's a hot water bottle. And you lift up her beak and you can fill it. Excuse me. <laughs> Here's a good one for you. This one? This one's from your staff. I'll take the next one. From my staff? From your staff. You don't want it. That ought to be something. Yes. 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 Wow! Oh. First time we ever said yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Gee, I'll give you the question. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. 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 Makes you better than the rest. <laughs> Very good. Is this the one you worry about, Paul? Personal timer. Just what I wanted. It is. Uh, seriously, this is a universal clock. It tells you the time no matter where you are in the world. Where you are in the world. About Capitol Hill. <laughs> it stopped. It's not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, In the carbon dating. You can do it this way. It opens. It slides out. I won't be able to do it. Open something else. There you go. Wow. See, it slides out like that and it sits there. And then you dial up wherever you want. Oh, then you dial wherever you want for the. Okay, the place in the world. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> You not only get batteries, you get Kathy who explains that like a new one of these. I don't, I'm still using my old one from Treasury. So they, they gave me a new one. <laughs> my daily schedule and the White House pass. Very nice, thank you. Somebody doesn't like my using the old treasury one. Yes, Well, you really caught me this time, because I didn't expect it, I didn't want it. But uh, now that it's here, <laughs> uh, very nice of you, and I really appreciate it. I've seen all the others of you have birthdays all during the year. And as the Vice President points out, those of us who run at the Christmas season always felt cheated. <laughs> well, as gr growing up, that used to happen. My aunts or uncles and so on will say, uh, I didn't get you anything for your birthday, but I got a few for Christmas. <laughs> and uh, so I'd always say, oh, Mr. Gabby. And then when I heard where royalty in England, you know, uh, have their birthdays in the middle of the summer period so it could be celebrated, I thought, ha-ha, there's the right idea. Maybe I could do that. But I was persuaded by my family, no time. <laughs> so I've always uh, been lured with December 21st. But one final note. You know how you are when you're a kid? You look to see on who, who else has your birthday? You know, who's born on the same day of uh, the year that you were? I hate to tell you, mine. <laughs> Joseph Stalin. <laughs> <laughs> I got a four-year-old who's uh, having a birthday tomorrow. Good. So she missed you by 
35 or 40 years, but uh, yeah. 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 hadn't saved me any money. That's about it. Now I can relax. And I know somebody else wanted that day. Well, again, thank you. One and all. Happy birthday. Thank you. You don't have to tell you. One thing. Sam 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 and it was golfing enough that you could tell stories about it. <laughs> but uh, you do know, as a golfer, one day the tee sliced out onto the street. It was out there, and it hit a car. <laughs> and when he got down there, there was a policeman waiting with his ball and uh, said, the car you hit was a police car. He said, uh, gave him the ball back, and he said, what are you going to do about it? And Don said, well, I figured that if I rolled it. <laughs> <laughs>
10,000 signatures on the two sides of this card. And as I said, I don't think we'll be getting many Christmas cards as impressive or as wonderful as this one. And we're deeply grateful to all of these people. And if you hadn't heard the part of this young lady who had conceived the idea and brought this about, but this is very wonderful these people to come here and mark. we're more grateful than we can say. Mr. President, I'd like to present this book to you. It's the buildings of Westminster. It gives a brief history of the city of Westminster, and I would like for you to have that and really read about our city. Yes. It's a wonderful place. I would like to welcome you to the city of Westminster, and any time you get an opportunity, I'm sure you'll be fully welcome by the citizens. Now I'd like to present this plate to your, your wife. The city of Westminster, it's the city hall. It's a beautiful building. I hope that you hang it in your home. Remember, if you ever get an opportunity to come to the friendly city of Westminster, please. Yes. 